Welcome to Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection. She has been inspiring her audiences to fire up their brains and ignite positive changes in their relationships. And now she is here to bring that knowledge to you. The information she shares will help those who hear it to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. When you learn to tap into the potential of your natural gifts and the power of the brain-mind connection, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. Today and every Wednesday on Brain Lady Speaks, you'll explore the latest findings to see how they have practical application in your life. And now, get ready to join Julie Anderson on Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Take it away, Julie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 27th, the last Wednesday of April of 2016. This is, I am Julie Anderson, also known as the Brain Lady Julie, and you are listening to the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. Uh, on the Lessons in Joyful Living Network. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out today to listen to this program. It is going to be fun. Let me tell you, my brain is on fire. It is just buzzing. I, uh, In preparing for this topic that we're going to share today, and I'll get to the topic in just a minute, I refreshed my, you know, I pulled out my research books and my white papers and the different research I've done in the past, and then I added to it some of the the latest the latest stuff coming out of neuroscience, and it just it just has my brain on fire. I'm just like, oh my goodness, how am I going to fit all of this into the into the show today? So we'll probably be doing it in two or three parts actually to cover the topic. Um, but before I get to the topic, I always like looking at the calendar. You guys know I look at the calendar and and see what's going on in terms of months that are devoted to things, you know, uh, we did Women in History Month, we did um, Autism Month, the first, we're going to talk a little bit about that today, actually, when we're talking about our topic, uh, we did the first show of the month was on autism, because it was National Autism Month here in April, and today, this is, this is Administrative Professional Day, so I can't get past this day, since it just happened that my show fell on Administrative Professional Day, that I have to thank my team. So I have my company, Your Best Mind, and my company, Brain Lady Speaker, and I could not run through, I could not manage all of the details without my team, as I like to call them. So I want to formally thank my team today on the program. I want to thank um, my right-hand um person. She does everything for me, Kelly Graves. I just, I send her a text. I send her whatever I need and and she is on it, including just stopping at Starbucks and bringing me coffee when I need it Um, or a a very, very refresher. And then I have my, I called her my cohort in crime for a long time, uh, Debbie Preston. She does a lot of detail work for me. And then I have the, I'm blessed that I have my mom on my team and my mother, Teddy, uh, Teddy Graves, she does a lot of work for me as well, and she does a lot of my speakers' outreach. So they're all in that administrative professional capacity for me. And like I said, I, I have to take a moment to just say thank you to them. I do have cards for them. However, they're still sitting on my desk <laughs> because I don't have them taking care of the detail of filling them out for me. I guess that would be a, would be counterproductive, right? It wouldn't They wouldn't get the point if I just handed them a card and said, here, fill it out for me. But anyways, they are my team. I love my team. And for those of you who have administrative professionals in your life, reach out and thank them today. Thank them this week because for any business owner, um, they, they are a crucial part of your team, of your business. You're, you're, you have to have somebody out there helping you out with the details if you are an entrepreneur or business owner. So that's my little two cents and thanking my amazing uh, team and for their help and for their support. Okay, let's move on to the topic for the day. The topic is the cognitive neuroscience of music. So let's just make that fun and say we're just going to be talking about music in the brain (laughs) because let me tell you, it is amazing what they are finding out. Your music is so much more than just for enjoyment in our life. I mean, obviously, throughout history, um, cave paintings, you know, it doesn't matter 
everywhere you go, there's always been music. Every culture has music. Every culture has, uh, throughout the world, has music that has a unique sound that is connected to their culture or to their region. So music is a huge part of just day-to-day activity in in all of our lives, you know, whether it is at work, it is at play, you are a musician, uh, or you just simply just love listening to music, it has a place in almost everyone's life. Music is amazing because music of one kind or music can have um, it affects all of us on an emotional level. It can raise our emotions. It can uh, make us sad if it's a you know type of music that that brings you down it can be or that invokes those emotions it can wake up memory circuits we're going to talk about that today it can wake up memory circuits that normally are locked or that for some people get locked out due to diseases or um, neurological disorders so music it's is so much more than just for our listening pleasure it has deep deep impact in every day of our lives and that's what we're going to really talk about today we're going to talk about all those facets we're going to talk about a little bit about how it's being used as behavior or as um as therapy and we're going to do a lot of this we're actually going to have to do this in a two-part because there's it really is just an amazingly large amount of therapy or of um, information and i was going to have a licensed musical therapist as a as a guest on my program today tara mcconnell however she was not able to make it this morning we just weren't able to pull it together for the show today but she will be on on the 11th of may so we're going to kind of do this in a in a two-part series, and I'm going to lay a lot of the groundwork here today. And then the second Wednesday in May, we're going to have her on, and she's going to focus a lot on how the details of how music therapy is being used and what it's being used for. I'll touch on it today, but we'll focus on that more in an upcoming program. But we're going to talk about uh, how it is helping with those emotional disorders, depression, how it can enhance learning. As a homeschooling veteran, I homeschooled my three kids for 16 years, and I did a lot of research because I have the neuroscience background. You know, we did a lot of research on how to incorporate music into training in your school system and why it's so important, whether you're homeschooling or your child is going to a public school. Uh, you might want to rethink the afternoon sports, so to speak programs that you have your kids in. You may not necessarily want it to be physical sports. You may want to consider putting them in a music program because of the very positive uh, things that the that music can have on the brain. So just first, we'll start off before we go to the first break. And I want to talk about the, the basics of how the anatomy in, you know, what is it exactly? How does music and the brain work? And it's, it's pretty interesting because it's different, obviously, in different people because every brain is different. But it's really important to understand the difference between someone who's musically trained and someone who is not. Because the brain deals with music quite differently from language. Okay, It's not the exact same centers, even though some of the similar centers light up. Recent research is calling it a brain's music room. And this is, I'm going to share this, it's it's very, very recent, just within the last six months or so, that the results of these studies have come out. But there, there are regions in the cerebral cortex, okay, in the brain, that are engaged for appreciating different aspects of music, but they're not always grouped in the same area. So depending on your influence, your growth with music, uh, whether or not you've had musical training, it is going to activate different portions of the brain more intensely. And most recently, uh, research that has been being done is talking about how, you know, we know that the brain is connected to music, but exactly how we weren't sure. And researchers out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed this brain, this way to look at the brain in imaging scans. Most um, interestingly, or most specifically the functional MRI scans, the functional magnetic resonance imaging scans, and how they've been able to identify neural pathways that react most exclusively to the sound of music, okay, any type of music, but it's not, it's, it's responding in a different area than just say what your brain is doing right now as it's listening to me speak, uh, Nancy Ken Wisher <laughs> and Josh McDermott, McDermott, who are professors of neuroscience at MIT, uh, 
They've done some research with the functional MRI scans, and they have detected, they feel they've detected a second neural pathway in the brain that is different than the one that is connected to human speech. So they're activating these different parts of the brain in different ways. So this paper that was, or I should say another paper that was released by Joseph, I can't even pronounce his last name, Ross Shecker, out of the Laboratory of Integrative Neuroscience and Cognition of U- Georgetown University, said that the, the brain gives specialized treatment to music recognition and that music is a specific category of sound. And it's very exciting what they're, what they're finding. But they've actually been able to identify the more technical these brain scans get, the more they're able to identify exactly which portions of the brain are engaged in listening to music versus just listening specifically to um, just me talking or, you know, the sound of of you know water dripping out of the faucet or whatever that whatever that may be and the way that it recruits different areas of the brain and it even draws on their finding how it even in, connects with the motor system this is especially uh expressed if you have musical training which we're going to talk about when we come back from break uh there is also how it goes into social understanding so how it gets deeper into the brain, into the emotion centers of the brain, and into our relationships and how music is connected to that. So this is really kind of a, a new a new area that they are, are identifying these neural pathways that, you know, respond to music. And it, it's exciting. It's pretty exciting. There's, it's, I'm sure that as we go through the upcoming years, it's just the more technical the scans get, you know, the more information that we get out of this. But we do, as human beings, we do have what's called a musical mind. We are predisposed to responding to music in ways that other species, animal species, insect species, may uh, they don't. They don't respond emotionally in um, in the same pattern that we do. So it's very interesting to look at how this is affecting our relationships and the things that we do. And we would come back from break. We're going to take a real quick break here. When we come back, we are going to discuss uh, the difference between a musically trained brain and a non-musically trained brain. So get comfortable. Come back for some more exciting information. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Imagine what your life would be like if you could master the thoughts in your head that hold you back, the thoughts that prevent you from living the very very best version of the life you're here to live, the very best business that you're here to create. I'd like to invite you to join the Art of Personal Mastery, the free online event that starts the 11th of April. All you have to do to join is to go to www.theartofpersonalmastery.com, enter your name, your email, click Get Access, and I'll share with you how to join me and 21 leaders experts from around the world talking about how to break your bad habits, create powerful new ones, master your mindset and your actions to create the life you're here to live. I'll see you there, www.theartofpersonalmastery.com. I'll see you soon. Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all important why behind what people do and how they think. The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. Hopefully you're comfortable. You got some hydration going on and you're ready to open your mind to the sound of music. <laughs> okay. So before I left a break, I said that when we came back, we were going to focus on or talk about the difference between a trained musician's brain and a non-trained musician's brain. So in the non-trained musician and pretty much anybody, if they were connect any of us to a PET scan machine, it would be primarily and play music and then watch which portion of the brain lights up the most. The main area of the brain that's going to light up in in all of us is going to be the auditory portion of the auditory cortex on the right hemisphere. It's not directly associated to language, which is primarily on the left hemisphere. It is more specifically just in the back right or the posterior right hemisphere of the brain. And this is what we call the the home of music because we will all reckon our brains will all light up and fire up and start burning more energy in that area of the brain when we hear it. However, musicians who have been trained, their brain is a little bit different. So a trained musician will show a higher activity in the left hemisphere. So on the left or the, the auditory side of the brain um, in that language dominant area because it's dissecting the language in the in the music itself and it also uh, will involve activate an appreciation for the emotional aspects of music that is on the right side of the brain and the emotional content of music and when it comes to uh, rhythm and uh, just the general rhythm and music, whether you're trained or not trained, a little portion on the left side shows up. So we've got lots of different areas uh, in the brain that respond, and even more so if you are a trained musician. And the reason why is you have to think about uh, what being a trained musician means. It means you're going to have to recognize not just what music sounds like, but you're actually dissecting the music. If you have been trained to read music, then your brain is visualizing those pieces of music on a on a piece of paper. Your if you are, for example, when they do scan when they scan the brain of a pianist, the region of the motor cortex that controls hand and finger motions is much larger in a professional pianist or keyboard or stringed musician than say just the average Joe like me who doesn't play an instrument. So my brain has areas that are smaller than a trained musician. Now I always knew I had a pea brain. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that by utilizing those functions, you're exercising portions of the brain. And anytime you exercise a portion of the brain through brain training, you increase neural networks, you increase neural activity. And so that muscle, that portion of the brain becomes larger. Uh, there is the areas, they're also showing that trained musicians have slightly larger corpus callosum in, callosum in the front part. And the corpus callosum is this, this communication system between the right and the left hemisphere of the brain. And in trained musicians, this is slightly larger in the front portion of the corpus callosum. So it's it's pretty interesting, probably because they're having to more rapidly as a trained musician, more rapidly send messages from the right to left hemisphere of the brain in actually playing music. So it just, it, it not only involves reading the music, so it's the reading portions of the brain, it involves the sounds and the tones of music, it involves the motor cortexes of music, whether you, know, you use your hands, no matter what it is, drums, piano, violin. So they have, they develop special motor and sensory skills that a non-trained musician builds and develops. And this is an important side, side point, okay? I really want to emphasize this heavily because, again, it's something that is kind of, was a passion of mine because I homeschooled my kids. And uh, when, you, when you take out music training, Decades ago, musical trainings were natural parts. They were just, it was automatically something that a child had uh, exposed to them in elementary grades, and it is no longer there. You know, when they started just crunching and taking finances away from, or at least not no longer there in the United States. Other countries obviously have different programs, 
but here in the United States, it was kind of pulled away. So if your child is in, this is one of the reasons why if your child is in uh, public school, enroll them, enroll them to, into uh, music because the brain develops better and is exercised more when you are exposed to music. And they've done some, oh, just fascinating, fascinating, fascinating stuff uh, that is connected to learning and how music helps learning. So let me let me share with you some of those those thoughts because I think these are important, really, really, really important uh, to keep in mind when you're a parent. Studies that were done, this was actually all the way back in 1995, but studies that were done when with children music five to nine, so ages five to nine, it says if one starts early, one may benefit from a lifetime of, of enhanced interhemispherical, so in other words, across the brain, right and left side, activity. MRI studies have shown that the fibers of the corpus callosum, we just talked about that, which connect the left and right hemisphere, are as much as 15% wider in these musicians. So this is ages five to nine. And if they continue to play music as they grow up, they continue to keep this area more active and continue to keep it, this growth. Um, the list, or learning music enhances cognition because to activate and synchronize neural firing patterns that are connected with music and learning music and knowing music, it enhances those firing patterns. So the brain's efficiency and effectiveness is enhanced, especially once they have learned music, if you have learned things. Uh, key systems that are impacted are the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes, as well as the cerebellum. Celebar celeb <laughs> the cerebellum is down in the action portion. And in engaging this music and music in learning, applying it even if you're not learning music per se, but you're including music sounds or music playing in the background in a learning environment, studies have shown that it increases spatial reasoning, creativity, and mathematical skills. That's pretty impressive. So let's look at some of these mathematical skills that are increased. It they did a study with 29 students. They actually had three sets of 29 students. So they had them in three different groups. So the first group received piano instruction and then were given a math video game to play. The second group received computer-based English training, so no music and a math video game. And then the last set received no piano instruction, uh, no video gaming. It was just basic what you get in the basic school system. Just here's your math. Here's how you learn it. Out uh, completely above who outscored was the piano and math group. So the group that received the piano instruction and then did the math training or did the math testing, they far outscored those in the other two groups, the English and math group, and then the control group that had absolutely no in, you know, input of music or other training. So it was fairly interesting. Undeniable research is going into showing that if you have instruction or if you're even listening to music, it will enhance your learning ability. Uh, there was a breakthrough study that was done um, at the, oh, let me see the, I'll find the, the actual place later. It showed that increased scores in spatial temporal reasoning ability, which is, it's a basics for math, you know, for understanding math, especially once you get into geometry and the higher levels of math. It was, oh, there it was. It was done in uh, a preschool in Southern California. And again, when the kids received piano keyboard training and singing, because they, they included singing in that, they far increased and improved their reasoning skills, their mathematical skills. And these were just one or two lessons a week. So it wasn't like it was these, you know, intensive, heavy, you know, oh, they became, you know, classical pianists. <laughs> this is just some basic, basic uh, uh, influence by, of music in training. Early music, different, uh, see, Turert and Van Griesen, <laughs> 
said that in 1988, said that early music exposure will help children identify and manage their emotional states. Okay, their emotional states. So it helps with managing their emotions, which is really, really important. And we're going to talk about just how music helps with that is when we come back from the break and how it helps in different types of therapy. So in learning, it's just undeniable that if you if you have musical training, it's going to increase your ability, your children's ability to learn. It's going to increase your children's ability to retain information. And when you connect, you bring in the fact that memory is connected to music, which we're going to talk about that as we go on through the show, uh, it, it's going to help you to understand how if they have that musical training and they're trying, you're trying to, if you have the musical training as a child and as an adult, you're sitting there going, uh, I can't remember this. Actually, going back and playing musical instruments is going to activate the memory centers. So that's a pretty exciting thing, too, that we can actually help our brain recall thoughts. And we're going to talk about a movie that was done uh, called Alive Inside as we uh, towards the end of the show. It was just really, uh, really, really incredible, really incredible. So there's a lot of benefits to music. And don't think that, okay, well, I'm old. And since I'm old, uh, then I don't necessarily need to, uh, you know, what am I going to do? I didn't learn it as a child, so I'm doomed. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Obviously, our, when your brain is more malleable before you hit that puberty point in life, uh, under the age of you know 12 or 13, that's when the brain is the most malleable. That's when the brain can learn the easiest. However, that doesn't mean that you and I can't learn as an adult. It just means it's a little bit more challenging. But learning it at any age is going to ha help increase neural connections. It's going to increase activity in different sides, different portions of the brain. And that's going to help us stave off, uh, you know, neurologically uh, degenerative diseases, which is pretty exciting, too, because there's a lot of exciting research that's being done in that. So, see, I told you I was going to just fill this show with a ton of information because we are already at the halfway point, ready to go to our second break. So if you want, we're going to get grab a pen and paper because we're going to hit you with some more exciting neuroscience when we come back and how the brain affects the psyche, how it affects our emotional state, how it helps us to deal with stress. And how even some music can have a negative response in the brain. So we're going to discuss that when we come back. So take a quick break and join me afterwards on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. We often ask, is that all there is? Why is this happening to me? Why am I always broke? How am I going to survive this mess? Then join Dr. Geraldine Tegeloff for Nature Spirits Speak, 7 p.m. Tuesday evenings on Toginet.com. Geraldine is a metaphysician, nature intuitive, and prosperity coach who shares with you how she went from totally broke to living what she would call her perfectly prosperous life. Through the combination of a wealth of metaphysical knowledge and her amazing ability as an intuitive, Geraldine brings to you the secrets of her magical journey of healing emotionally, spiritually, and financially. As with the ancient seers and master teachers, Geraldine has a unique gift of being able to connect to the simple yet profound messages brought to us by Mother Nature and happily shares these through today's note to self on her webpage, naturespiritspeak.com. If you need help with your journey, why not connect with Geraldine during her show, Nature Spirit Speak, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central on toginet.com. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on toginet.com. 
Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the million dollar mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the million dollar mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. For more information on the million dollar mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the million dollar mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all-important why behind what people do and how they think. The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope you're all ready to just go review your playlist and <laughs> start, start including music in every aspect of your life because we're going to get even more, more interesting because we've talked about just the brain anatomy up to this point and how it enhances learning, how it can uh, increase your brain's ability to stay young in terms of, you know, always exercising those muscles. But now let's talk about how it helps us on an emotional State And this is where it just really gets even more fascinating. Right now, a mu music therapy is being done in a lot of investigations and tests and studies are being done on music therapy in many, many, many different areas. They are using it to help with dementia, with cancer, with childhood cancer, uh, with military, uh, um, you know, people with PTSD from the military bipolar disorders, lots of interesting information. One of the studies that that I love referring to when I'm talking about the importance of music and the right type of music, because there it, it can also induce negative emotions. A very interesting study that's being done in that area as well. As a matter of fact, just briefly, they did, they've done research where they have um, individuals look at, at, pictures of, you know, just kind of neutral emotion pictures, you know, pictures that wouldn't necessarily invoke a particular emotion in, in people, you know, just kind of a neutral picture. And when they listen to certain types of music, the more upbeat music, the music that's known to, to invoke positive emotion type, you know, actives, activities in your brain, when these these study groups, these sample groups were asked afterwards to describe this neutral type picture. They always painted it in a very positive light. They painted it with the positive things that they saw in that picture. Whereas if they were the groups that were shown or listened to the negative emotion or the negative musics first, the music that invoke sadness, because we all know we have those songs or we hear those songs. I mean, just you watch any movie and you know how integral mu music is in a movie. You know, if it's a sad scene coming up, then they're playing music that makes you feel sad. And I don't know if you've ever, uh, if you've ever watched any movie with or watched clips of movies, you know, exciting clips or sad clips or whatever, without the music, it's amazing how different the brain reacts to it. But these individuals that were that shown the music that was designed to make you feel sad, they found the negatives. They found the sad things that the, this picture that really didn't invoke much emotion, it, it, you know, neutral emotion response. Well, once they listened to the music that was sad, they picked out the sadness in the in the picture. They picked out the negatives in the picture. The very interesting uh, way to look at different things that you go through in your life. I had this experience just last week with my producer. We had some miscommunication go on and we wound up having to record the program and we didn't do it live. We had to record it and then play it. And since we were recording it, we didn't cut out for the commercial breaks, right? We just kind of recorded straight through. Well, it's the commercial breaks that has the intro and exit music in it. And for those, you know, you know, you, you hear it on the show every week, this, the music that I picked out that 
for the Brain Lady Speaks radio show is very upbeat. It's very energetic. And I did that by design because I think this is very upbeat information that we're sharing. And it to have to record the program without that introduction and the and the the exit music, it was kind of hard. It was hard to keep my energy level up because we didn't have the music helping me to do that. So music has a definite effect on the emotion centers in the brain. There was a study done in 1994 at the Tallahassee, Florida Memorial Research Medical Center. And they played music. The study was to help discover what impact music would have on newborns and premature babies who had low birth weight. So those, the, the groups of children who heard music or heard a tape of lullabies for one hour per day, they actually reduced their hospital stay by five days. They also normalized quicker, their weights normalized quicker, and the stress levels were lower than in the controlled group that didn't have the music played. And there's a lot of other studies that have also shown that lowered stress in hospitalized adults uh, respond to music as well. So think about that. This this is this it has a really important impact. Now we're talking about our physical health. We're talking about the potential to affect survival survivability for infants who are born premature or who have low birth rate and are at high risk of not surviving. And they're showing that they can actually increase their odds or improve their odds, if you will, by simply introducing the right kind of music. Okay, very exciting. They also have done research. There was a landmark study that that was done by Dr. Klinke in 1999. And he actually did it with um, with animals. He brought in animals, but the, the end result, that the hypothesis was that in, infants who have this music played, they are, they respond better. They grow better. Now it's the right kind of music because again, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, negative type of music, but it's, it's believed that infants as young as five months old can discriminate between uh, Western music, between one type of music and other types of music, you know, music that's, that's natural to our culture in the United States. And, you know, cultures elsewhere. So interesting, interesting. Um, let me see here. Another really interesting study that is powerful when it comes to the brain and our emotions is the studies that they are doing, uh, how, how music is helping children to identify and manage their emotional stressors. So kids who are in young children, are able to really well identify emotional tones in music. And if they have this, this, in, or this musical training or this musical influence, it helps them to deal with their stresses better. They manage their stress better. So they're not only learning better, but they're able to express their feelings more appropriately. They're able, studies are showing that they're able to understand and manage these feelings better and it's helping them to control their impulses and reduce their stress, okay? Very important. It's also helping them to understand their uh, consequences of their actions because they're thinking, oh, which is a very hard thing to do without the prefrontal cortex, and that's not developed until you're 23 years old. So when you can introduce things like music that can help children to work their way through their emotions and understand their, their actions and what happens when they do things, that's pretty powerful when they don't have the brain circuits quite developed yet. There was a study that was done on dealing with social and emotional skills. Dr. Spy, Spychinger of the university in Freiburg, Switzerland, he studied 700 children that were 7 to 15 years old. And he found that the group that was provided with music instruction five days per week not only improved academically, but just as importantly, their social skills improved. And there's just study. I'm looking at study after study after study here in front of me. Uh, so it's it helps you to to deal with other people better. It's just, I don't know if maybe it's the harmony that it creates in the brain, makes you have harmony in your relationships. Not really sure the reason why this takes place. We just know that it does. 
And that's that the why will come, I'm sure, as these different technical uh, research scanning machines and whatnot develop. But at this point, we just know it works. Music can also help huge with developmentally disabled children. Uh, it's the delayed children or the developmentally disabled children low, had lower stress levels and were uh, had the possibly because it, the music gave them the ability to participate correctly. The study reported a significant improvement in communicative response acts stress or score sheet, which is what's given to uh, developmentally disabled children who are having trouble interacting. So this was marked improvement, lowered stress levels, okay? Lowered stress levels, that's awesome. The it also helps with emotional intelligence, you know, and and being able to just manage those emotions better. There were, um, let's see, music in regulating mood. Um, after hearing sad music, I mentioned this earlier. We talked about how sad music would induce sad feelings, and subjects would rate these neutral images uh, in the mind as being sad, upbeat music as being more positive. In Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, and other psychological problems, music has enhanced mood, mood and actually increased survival rate. Increased survival rate. So it, just interesting stuff. Like I said, they're doing research on uh, helping with dementia, cancer. If we go back and we, if you go back and you listen to one of the shows, I believe I did it in January, we talked about the connection between emotions and your immune system response. So this is how the brain is just this really wonderful, intricately connected, everything is connected to everything in the brain uh, muscle that we have here. When you know that you have, we, we talked about how positive emotions actually could increase your immune system response, increase your white blood cell count, and how negative emotions will decrease your natural killer cells and all of that. So if you have, if music has the ability to alter your mood for the good or bad, then you can improve your mood by listening to positive emotion invoking music. And if you're having positive emotions generate in your brain, then you are improving your immune system. If you are improving your immune system, then your odds of beating uh, different uh, illnesses is going is going to increase. Fascinating. So it's all connected. It's all connected. And here we are. We are three quarters of the way through the show. We are ready to go to another in another uh, break. When we come back, we are going to talk about some studies that were done on the negative effects that music can have on the brain. And then we're going to talk about a fascinating movie that was done called Alive Inside and how that's affecting dementia, how music affects a dementia and Alzheimer's and whatnot. So join me back after break on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Imagine what your life would be like if you could master the thoughts in your head that hold you back, the thoughts that prevent you from living the very very best version of the life you're here to live, the very best business that you're here to create. I'd like to invite you to join the Art of Personal Mastery, the free online event that starts the 11th of April. All you have to do to join is to go to www.theartofpersonalmastery.com, enter your name, your email, click Get Access, and I'll share with you how to join me and 21 leaders experts from around the world talking about how to break your bad habits, create powerful new ones, master your mindset and your actions to create the life you're here to live. I'll see you there, www.theartofpersonalmastery.com. I'll see you soon. 
Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all important why behind what people do and how they think. The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Woohoo! Welcome back. Welcome back to the last segment of our April 28th, 27th show. Okay. So let's try to jam this last bit of information in uh, powerful, powerful stuff that we're going to that that we're covering here when it comes to music in the brain, uh, cognitive neuroscience of music. OK, so we talked about before we left for break, we were talking about the po- potential for negative effects that the that music can have. And they've done studies in over recent years that the the negative effect that especially on teens that heavy metal or violent rap music could possibly have on teenagers. Now, it's kind of, it's it's very interesting that it, there's so many different things that might, in you know, encourage a child to listen to angry music, as I like to refer to it, because uh, I don't want to pick on any particular style of music. I'm not saying that rap music is bad. As you can tell by the introduction to my show and the music that we designed for this, it's very on the rock side. I'm, I'm definitely an 80s rocker, right? Uh, so I'm not necessarily picking on any type of music, but if you were to have a predisposition due to perhaps your family atmosphere, you know, were you raised in an angry atmosphere or an atmosphere where there was a lot of negative emotions? Could listening to angry type music induce or perpetuate a problem that already exists? Well, they're finding that that's very, that's quite possible. Getting teenagers to listen and, co- and uh, cooperate with studies are a little problematic because it's, you know, it's, they, they, kind of have their own style and their own, as I said, their own attitude going into a lot of the studies. But one study that they did that found that there was a strong link between those, those who listened to heavy metal and rap music in the lower grades that they developed earlier behavioral problems. Uh, they, I'm sorry, they had lower grades developed earlier behavior problems, early sexual activity, arrests, and drug use. And these were students who listened almost exclusively to heavy metal and rap. Okay. Another study that involved young male, male felony, felony offenders, rap was the most commonly cited as their favorite type of music. Okay. Interesting. Again, it, it there is the... You know, the idea that the music is just a reflection of their lives. It's a kind of a reflection of their upbringing, perhaps, or an expression, a way for them to express or what is being expressed in the music is expressing their negative emotions. But when you look at studies where you find that even within these, uh, you know, these studies that are being done, 72 percent of individuals say that their moods are influenced by music. So if you are being influenced by your music and you are listening to music that induces anger, then what is going to wind up happening in your life? You're going to be displaying more anger. There was another study that involved 121 high school students that suggested that although heavy music fans um, exposed fewer compelling reasons for living and more thoughts of suicide... Okay. Subjects claim that the music actually elevated their mood. However, they, in this group who listened to heavy metal music, they actually had more suicidal thoughts and l- fewer compelling reasons for living. Again, personally, my opinion is that it's, it's kind of perpetuating a problem. It isn't necessarily the problem. But the base point is that on a brain level, music affects your mood. So if you are in an overwhelmingly negative mood most of the time or down mood, you might tend to be drawn to music that just perpetuates that or just feeds that mood. And that's where danger and uh, caution needs to be 
to be put into play? Is there, you know, can you then have the opposite effect? So you've got somebody who's experiencing a lot of negative emotions, a lot of suicidal thoughts, no reasons for living. Can you constantly expose them then to positive emotion invoking music and alter their mood? I think you could. I think you could. I think there should be studies done on that. There may be studies done on that that I just simply have not found yet. Uh, but I think that it's, that, you know, music induces emotions that it strongly affects or strongly affects our emotions. So we need to take a look at that. Okay, so now, <laughs> before I run completely out of time, I want to talk about the very positive effects of music therapy. Uh, they are doing studies with, as I said, childhood cancer. And I thought this was so, um, so profound. Music therapy and childhood cancer. When music therapy is used in childhood cancer, it aims to stimulate communication as well as reduce some of the symptoms associated with cancer and cancer treatment, such as pain, anxiety, mood disturbance, and depression. It can also help children cope better with hospitalization. Trained music therapists can effectively reduce both patient and family anxiety and depression. And this was written by uh, in the Music Therapy for Cancer on Cancer Treatment in the um, childhood cancer research that was being done. So I thought that was pretty, you know, can you improve someone's life when they're going through heavy, uh, emotionally draining things? And again, what if it's, a, what if it's, you know, inducing the immune system? In 1995, there was a study done by Reen and McCarthy, Dr. Reen and Dr. McCready, sorry, and showed that music-induced emotions strongly impact our stress system. And studies suggest that music can enhance the immune system by lowering the heart rate. So if it's lowering your stress, it's calming your heart rate. It's improving your, um, your, your or reducing your stress response, controlling your stress response. So you're not engaging that amygdala, go back and listen to uh, the show that I did on uh, Can Stress Kill You or Is Stress Killing You or something like that. I can't remember the title. I think it was back in January or February of 2016. Take a look at it because there's undeniable research that stress causes this huge chemical response in the amygdala, the fight or flight, all that kind of stuff. And that that is it destroys your immune system, right? You don't want that. Uh, it it actually increases uh, cortisol levels. Now, interestingly, there was a study of surgery parent, patients that demonstrated that, that uh, when they were exposed to music, had lower cortisol levels during surgery than the non-music control group. And this was a study done in 1993. Fascinating stuff. Music and relaxation. Um, Alzheimer's patients who are five times a week exposed to relaxing music, 30-minute music sessions, found that melatonin concentration in their blood levels increased dramatically and remained high after the six-week follow-up. So even after the studies were done, weeks later, there was still a positive response that was continued in the body. So calming, you know, other neurotransmitters, neuro norepinephrine and epinephrine levels were raised during music therapy, but returned to pre-therapy pre levels um, once the study was concluded. However, music therapy will enhance, according to this study that was done in 1999 by Dr. Coomer, uh, found that because this melatonin level remained elevated after music therapy, it supports the notion that the, there is a long-term immune system enhancement. And this, the studies just go on and on and on. I can't continue on this. So I'm gonna, just going to completely run out of time. I wanted to talk briefly about the, the movie Alive Inside. If you have not seen it, it is an amazing movie. It is a movie that was done. Um, Dan Collin he did ex he found he wanted to do experiments with uh, music and care homes and there are several uh, several examples in that program of how individuals who were almost non-responsive due to advanced alzheimers almost non-responsive to people and to individuals showing almost no emotion when exposed to music not only brought them alive but it just brought back memories that they had long lost they interviewed her or they showed henry dreyer he was completely unresponsive but when the nurse put cab calloway music on 
it just totally reacted his emo- reactivated his emotions. His eyes light up. He starts talking about music. He starts talking about memories from the past just because of music. It engaged part. It was able to reach parts of the brain that on the surface looked like they were dead. There was another patient that was completely unresponsive, laying in the bed. They tried all kinds of physical therapy with her, just touching her, um, just giving her that physical reassurance. Nothing. When they in, when they put music on, she started moving in bed. It's like she was dancing in bed. It, it was incredible to watch. A third, Denise Walker, she she suffered not from Alzheimer's, but extreme bipolar disorder, had been institutionalized for many, many years. And when she was given music, she was put this little Walkman on and it was playing salsa. It was incredible to watch her. Absolutely incredible to watch her because what she wound up doing is she had had been using a walker for a long time and she pushed the walker away and she gets up and she starts dancing. It, it was amazing. It is absolutely incredible what music is, where, how music can help the brain. So in wrapping up the show today, and we will continue this topic. We will, because like I said, there's an amazing, I want to have Tara, we're having Tara McDonald on in a couple of weeks, and she's going to talk about more intricate details of actual music therapy, because I didn't even get to how they're dealing with PTSD and um, autism, all kinds of things that they're working uh, in this area with, and she's going to bring more light to that. But I think it's really, in the end, it's very important to understand that, you know, we have the ability as individuals, we can either passively allow our brains to just atrophy, to just kind of get old, if you will, or we can take action in our life and just enhance the wonderfully complex brain that we already have. And music is one of the ways to do that. Learn music. Have your kids learn music. Use music. If you're depressed, if you are in a down mood, play an upbeat song. Play something that's going to alter that mood and put you in a better mood. Okay? So there's lots of things you can do with music. It's just amazing. We will continue this topic. I am out of time. So I have to wrap up. I hope this was of interest to you. If you want any of these uh, studies or, or resources of the studies that I quoted today, please email me, contact me at info at, so I-N-F-O, info at yourbestmindonline.com or brainladyspeaker.com. Either one of those will get to me. Visit us. Visit us on, uh, uh, go to the website, Your Best Mind Online or BrainLadySpeaker.com. Connect with me, Purple Brain Lady on Facebook. Love to have you connect, put comments, um, interact, send me questions, whatever it is. And thank you so much. Thank you for spending this time with me today on the Brain Lady Speaks radio program. If you have thoughts, ideas, suggestions, uh, you want to listen again, it's all recorded. Thank you for being on the show and have an amazing week till we come back with some great brain information next week on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection. 